Yo, what's up? Are you stuck in a job that you hate? Are you commuting daily and you're wasting two hours of your day? Are you stuck in a cubicle and you want to travel more? Do you want to uh, maybe work from home? Then I'm going to help you to do exactly that using this complete guide that's going to take you from zero to hero. So my name is Christian and today I want to tell you what is the roadmap that you have to take in order to go from complete newbie all the way to paid developer. So I'm going to cover mindset, the actual skills, how to approach learning the skills and then how to actually find that job. I'm not going to start with the mindset now, I'm going to tell you about the mindset in just a second, but let's talk about the skills. You need to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, a library like React, state management, Redux, routing, React Router, styling, CSS, but in my opinion, you should look into style components. That's what all companies are using nowadays. Um, so note those down and use them for later, okay? Now, I have released two or three videos related to like creating websites uh, using HTML and CSS. HTML and CSS are two languages they're not programming languages but there are two languages that will help you create uh, a structure you'll be using html to create the structure of a website or the structure of a web app and then you'll be using css to make that structure look pretty all websites and all web apps are using html and css there is no way around it so you need to learn this you start by watching those two videos that uh, i have released in the past couple of weeks and then you start building a few websites the faster you start building, the faster you'll get your first remote developer job. You have to do a few websites. I would recommend you to re replicate the Apple website, maybe YouTube, and maybe tweet the Twitter landing page. If you do those three, it should take you maybe two, three weeks to finish those, and then you are good to go to the next stage. The next stage is all about learning JavaScript and more specifically, learning the syntax of JavaScript. So there are two phases when it comes to learning JavaScript. Knowing the syntax. So for example, you need to get to that level that if I tell you, hey, write a function called say hello that will console of whatever, you have to know how to do it without thinking. If I tell you to write a loop that counts from zero to 10, you should be able to do that. If I tell you create a function that takes an argument X, uh, then it's gonna push into some array that argument X that you passed in that function. So you need to learn and understand JavaScript and programming concepts. Now, the problem with most beginners is that they watch videos, which is fine. I'm going to talk about that in a second. They are watching videos, but they are not actually practicing the concepts that they are learning. Okay, this is a big, 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 big problem. Or if you're watching someone write a function or a variable or an array, that doesn't mean you know how to do it. You know of it, but you don't know it, if that makes sense. So in order to get over this hump that beginners have, which is knowing about the syntax and knowing about the concepts, you have to write a lot of code that makes no sense. Crazy, right? But this is how you play. In order for you to learn something, you need to play. If you do not play, you do not learn. Learning happens when you play. Keep that in mind. So you have to play a lot and you have to create random functions, random variables, random arrays, random objects, and you have to throw them, mix them, throw them around, make something else, make something with that. Make, you need to make like some sort of Frankenstein code that does everything and does nothing at the same time. You need to learn how to flow in code and that's when you're ready to the next stage. The next stage is about building small practical applications. A small calculator that takes two numbers, adds them together, and then it outputs a number. The result or the sum or the division or whatnot. Then you create a bigger calculator. You take that calculator, blah, blah, blah. Press a few buttons, you get the result, boom, done. Then you create a to-do app. The to-do app is the most fundamental application that any JavaScript and any programmer should know because it teaches you about creating, reading, updating, and deleting elements. These are the most 
important functions that you can have in your application. If you want to log into face Facebook, if you want to create an account, that's creating. If you want to post something on Twitter, that's creating. If you want to read posts from someone from Instagram, that's reading. If you want to update your email address, that's update. If you want to delete a post that you are embarrassed about, that's deleting. So no matter what you'll be doing, no matter what kind of application you'll be doing, you'll be using create, read, update, delete or CRUD. Okay, so you need to learn this. Now, once you've created all this stuff, then you go to the next stage, which is learning a library. So the library of choice is React. You pretty much replicate all these apps that you've done with vanilla JavaScript. You remake them with React so you can understand why React is better than JavaScript. Here's the problem here. The problem is that people jump into React when they don't have enough knowledge of JavaScript. And that makes them stuck and they say, oh, React is not good enough or I'm not good enough for React or this is too complicated or they actually pick it up but then at some point they'll be capped, they'll be stopped because of their lack of knowledge in JavaScript. Because you cannot be good at React if you're not good at JavaScript. <laughs> it's crazy, right? But it makes sense. And that's the problem with beginners. They try to do that, they get stuck and they cannot get past the first milestones. They think they are great and then they get, you know, slapped Oof. quickly. They think they don't know and they restart everything from scratch. They go into tutorial hell if they even get to this point because most people get stuck at the first stage. Once you've done these apps, now it's time to create your capstone project, which I also made a video about. But essentially you need to recreate or create an application from scratch and you should be working on this application for many, many months. I would suggest to you to aim for three to six months when it comes to working on this application. Why? Because it's gonna teach you to create complex stuff. If you have the calculator, the to-do app and whatnot, you are a noob, okay? And people will not take you in consideration, okay? You'll be the average junior developer, which is gonna have an average job if you manage to get one. Because in today's economy, everyone is literally very careful who they're hiring. So they prefer to spend a little bit more to get someone that can be really good. Guess, like side note, there will be layoffs, right? That's, that's a given. <laughs> the economy is really bad right now. So there will be layoffs. Who do you think is gonna go? The average person or the top performer? The average person, of course. So right now what I'm trying to tell you is that aim to do your best when it comes to creating all these applications, all these websites, everything that I've mentioned so far. Like really, really do your best. Do not aim to be average. If the average, you know, salary is 60K, but you know you can make 150, why don't you aim for 150? Even though it might be outrageous in your first job, but why don't you aim for 150? Like, I'll tell you something. If I would knew that I have the option to either get 60 or 150, I would get 150. I would go for 150. I don't want to be average. Do you want to be average? If you have a girlfriend, let's say, because you are probably a guy. Do you think your girlfriend would say, I'm so proud of my man. He's an average guy with an average developer job, with an average car, with an average salary, with an average uh, house, with an average meal that's eating every day, uh, with an average body that goes to average holidays and that's living an average life. I'm so attracted to this guy. You don't wanna be average, correct? So if you don't wanna be average, you need to do extraordinary things. So the point of this, to circle back, is that I have noticed a trend, okay? I have two people in my program, they are doing the same challenge, okay, the same challenge. One of them is executing the challenge, like it's outstanding. The level of detail, the level of like complexity that's going for in the same project, in, in one project, is totally different than someone that barely puts any effort. The thing is not aligned, it's somewhere on the top left, the colors are all wacky, the 
font sizes are weird, the functionality is not working properly, but you know, it's like half decent, kind of works. And that's fine, let me submit it for review. That's one person. And then you have this guy that I just told you about previously, that's like absolutely crushing it. Who do you think is gonna have higher chances of getting hired? Obviously the one here, correct? So what you should be aiming for is perfection, excellence. Not in the beginning when you are learning your concepts and whatnot, but once you understand those concepts and you start applying them, put your mind to work and ask yourself, how can I do more? How can I work harder? How can I impress everyone? How can I make myself proud? How can I go to bed thinking I've done everything I was able to do? How can I do that? What else can I do here? Is this enough? Is this enough so I can get out of this job that I have to commute every day? Is this enough? Because I'm tired of driving this car every single day, standing in traffic and listening to some bullshit radio. Is this enough so I can get out? That's the question you should be asking yourself. Now, as you're building this stuff, you will have problems. And actually, here is a comment from someone that attempted the challenge that I gave to you in one of those previous videos that I showed you. Simple structure to create websites. And funny enough, I'm giving the same structure to my students. And this guy has problems, right? And it's normal, like if you're trying to create some something, it might work, it might not. Most likely it might not work. And what do you do? Because this guy is stuck. Probably he's going and he's wasting a few days uh, probably he's watching another tutorial and he's trying some other course maybe he missed something there and this guy here sent me a message I sent him a video he didn't quite get it he get he got it but he didn't quite get it and then I jumped on a call with him and I solved the problem so what I'm trying to tell you is that you need a mentor and you need someone that you can reach out to whenever you're getting stuck because if you want to make a career change, you need all the help in the world. You cannot just, you know, wing it anymore. Like we are not in a situation where you can take your time anymore. You know, this is the real truth. You cannot really take your time anymore. You cannot just, you know, hope for the best. You actually have to be a professional right now. You need a roadmap, you need a proper game plan, okay, for this economical situation that we are in. You need to put in the work and you actually need to work really hard. And then you need a mentor, you need guidance, you need feedback. Okay, because these other guys that are doing their Udemy stuff and their YouTube clones and whatnot, they are just copying code. And you need to solve problems using your code, not just copy code. Because that's why you're going to be paid 100, 150, 200, 400k a year crazy numbers, but these are the numbers that you can make or get if you are really good. If you are average, then you're gonna get 60, no problem. 60 is there, you know, no problem. I'm not talking about 60K a year, you know, peanuts. I don't wanna eat peanuts because I'm allergic. And I hope you're allergic too. And if you're allergic to peanuts, I actually have a guarantee for my help, pretty much. If you work with me, if I end up working with you because if you are applying right now, I might cancel your call, okay? Because of the guarantee that I'm offering, which is I'm gonna give your money back if I cannot help you. If we end up working together, then I'm gonna help you until you get hired. So it doesn't matter if it takes you three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. I'm gonna work with you until that thing happens. Because everyone is going at their own pace. You might be slower or you might be faster. So why take three months when you can do it in two months? Maybe you are this close from gold, but you don't know. So I'm gonna guide you to the right direction. Or maybe you are really slow, you are on the slower side, that's fine. So you're gonna take your time until you actually understand every concept and you're not just, you know, repeating code or copying code like most people do. You actually have to understand it. It's like not a magic trick. It's just hard work, feedback, support throughout this entire journey that might take you months. Then, once you build your skills, then you need to start interviewing. Ooh, interviewing. The thing is, as a junior developer, you'll have very few interviews. 
Okay, you have to apply a lot, network a lot, and you have very few interviews here and there. So you need to be prepared. You need to know what questions they'll be asking you, and you need to do interview prep all the time. So in my program, if you work with me, we have weekly meetings where we practice interviews. So then once you get to that point where you can get a job, you can just prep interviews so you'll be extremely comfortable. And the funny thing is that even though you'll be ending up creating complex applications, all these interviews are extremely basic. And a lot of people mess them up because they forgot the basics by the time they've created complex stuff. In the interview process, when you'll be working with me, I'm gonna show you exactly how to answer these things. You'll be practicing so you can get over your fears and emotions and whatnot. So you actually can deliver the best thing out there. This is what I can offer to you. So if you are ready to go crush it and land that first remote developer job, apply for a free consultation call. The link is in the description, okay? If you do not get into my program by the end of this month, I'm going to double the price. So if you've been watching me for a while, this is the time for you to do it. You have nothing to lose and everything to win. You can look at all the testimonials from my website. You will see that everyone had the exact same problem as you and they achieved exactly the same thing that you want. So there is a no brainer, right? Why waste three years when you can do it in six months or a year or whatnot? Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.